you've heard all the legends. And not every myth is a myth. Now, for the first time on the silver screen in full color, experience the terror of the Moss Monster. What's going on, folks? Sorry about that, but I'm glad y'all back. So, I found this little thing at the dollar store. A buck. I mean, I could pass it up, but I was like, oh, I could put a little diorama in there. Check out the base. It wasn't too large. Had a hole in it, so, you know, in the future, could add some lights to it. So, anyways, first thing to do was make some terrain for it. Figured this was the best way to the circumference use my hot wire cutter to cut the circle out didn't go all the way so had to get crafty ended up using one of my small exacto utility knives and it was a little fat and out of shape so I put it to work and it lost quite a few pounds in a matter of minutes. There is something satisfying about that little hot wire going straight through the foam. You know what's crazy is when you plug it up, it gets hot almost instantly. It's a uh, Instantly, it's uh, pretty intense, and it was kind of too fat, so I cut it in half. I didn't want half the space in the diorama to be taken up by just the terrain itself. Plus, cutting in half gives me another piece in case I want to do another one later on, which I probably will. I mean, for a buck, I can't pass those little containers up, they're pretty awesome. And then the next step was cutting the sides to make it look more like rock. I wanted to have a real defining boundary, kind of like it just been chunked out of the ground, slapped on here. It was either that or painting it black, painting the outside of it black. And I didn't really feel like doing that. That seemed kind of cheap. So what I do is I cut like odd lines in it going horizontally and then come through and chip it out vertically and that will normally make it look like eroded stone also don't do what I do with my hot wire cutter and grab the plastic off there if you have one you will burn yourself I do it all the time but yeah anyways this was going to be like a little like a little puddle so there was no real way to get this out but I figured if I just melted it down Pulled out the chunks bit by bit and smoothed it out with the calluses on my rock hands that it would come out looking somewhat like a puddle and it did. It kind of looked like a muddy puddle that had been stepped in and traveled through. Obviously, you can see me using my thumb as sandpaper. Rocks. Yes, these rocks came from outside. It's always fun to take nature and incorporate it into your nature builds. Even though, like, 90% of everything is fake on it. And just made to look real. It is nice to take those you know, actual elements from outside and incorporate them into your build. And really like the color of those rocks. Limestone comes from the creek down by my house. And this hole was for a, a tree. And I wish I hadn't have made it that big, but it is what it is. Uh, 
there's the tree that ended up not working out and it was so hot in the studio that everything was super melted inside its bottles so the Mod Podge just poured out a little bit of water kind of thin it down probably too thin I never measure anything out correctly but if that happens to you just put a coat on let it dry put a coat on let it dry until you get the consistency that you want on your piece obviously you can see that was very light and I had to go over it a few times And after I had sealed the terrain with a little bit of Mod Podge and brown, I went ahead and covered up all that work with black paint. First I was like, oh, I'll dry brush this on here. Then halfway through I was like, to hell with it. I'll just soak it in black paint. Because, you know, in small details like this, you want your shadows to really stick out, be bounding off your highlights. And that was the case. Then the next part's just incorporating many shades of the same color of brown until it starts to look like mud and dirt. And I'll be honest with you, I I, I don't know what I'm doing. I just do it, and like you'll put a coat on and be like, oh, that ain't dark enough, or oh, that's not light enough. And you'll go back through with like a thousand different shades, and but that's okay, cause you know pick up a handful of dirt out in the forest and it's not all going to look the same and it was time to dry brush on some gray onto the rocks and then go back through and highlight that okay so this is my first attempt at making a tree and I've never made a tree before um, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it so best solution I came up with was to glue them onto a stick like this with sticky tacky and then try to brush them out obviously it didn't work they kept coming off uh, tried hot gluing it back on the hot glue wouldn't hold it I couldn't get the wire brush to shred the twine like I wanted it to so I ended up scratching that idea it was a horrible idea but yeah I ended up doing this which was pulling it apart into tiny little fibers and then I put those on the stick and used my airbrush painted it green and that's the tree that came out of it now I wanted a conifer with like some grandpa's beard moss on it came out decent but i definitely need to figure out a new way of making trees because obviously that thing sucks and everybody's favorite part which is flocking i use some of the new static grass that i got which is only two millimeters and i don't have a static grass applicator but oh well you know it's texture went back through with some medium green to put on the green it is not static grass so I also like to use this as moss and that's my lighter shade I have a darker shade of green I like to highlight my flocking moss with the light green in some spots like it's getting more water and eating healthier than the other moss I don't know it all looks the same in the end then I hot glued this. I filled that full of hot glue actually. Then I was like, yeah, this tree ain't coming out. Stuck it down in the hole. Turned out lovely. I liked it. I wish I would have kept with a pointier stick though, because that does look weird. But I was like, well, you know, I can always add a log later. 
and pretend that like the top of it fell off since it's going to kind of be in like a bog area so that's what I did and I added more because why not it looks really cool in there like it's something you would see out in the woods Now the next step was my first attempt at making a clay model since I was probably 12 years old. And this is oven baked clay, uh, super sculpy to be exact. Say that five times fast, I dare you. Anyways, I made this little guy. The first little guy I did kind of looked inappropriate so I ended up breaking him in half and chucking him in the garbage. After I baked him, um, I think I baked him at 275 for like 16, 17 minutes. Um, I was like, well, what am I going to do with this guy? And I wanted him to look like, like shrubs, like just part of the vegetation. Really wanted to keep him in. And I know you've already seen the end product look a little bit, but when I'm building something, I never know exactly what I'm building. Anyways, his foot broke off right there after I got him out of the oven because he fell over. And so I just trimmed his other leg off and he looked a little stubby but honestly it came out like more perfect than what I intended the first time so I based him in black and then started to bring him to life with a bunch of glue and a bunch of twine and just I wanted to fill in like you know like spots that the big pieces of twine wouldn't get with the shaggy twine and then he came out with some really cool dreads and I was like, oh that's cool, we should do another one, just leave it with the dreads, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted for this one, so I keep giving him more hair. I did the black on him to just, you know, do those shadows, gave him a creepy face. And I spray painted him a little green, but you'll never tell it. After that, you can't see this either because I suck at camera angles, but I covered him in flocking. And he became the moss monster, which I wasn't sure that I was making a moss monster when I first started this, but that's what it became, and yeah. Um, like him enough, I decided to film him before everything was dry. As always, I appreciate y'all watching. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you like my content and the bell. That way, when I actually do upload something, you can see it. Um, if you want to buy some of my dioramas, they'll be on my Etsy store. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's a good way to support me to keep buying materials to keep making these things. And I do appreciate it. Anyways, thank you again. And we'll see y'all on the other end of the trip.